join live on HT HTTP slash slash www dot Justin that's you dot TV slash is it just J Justin R Young? For some reason I want to write parahor. <laughs> parahor. You, you fucking schmuck. <laughs> okay. Live on Justin TV slash is it just slash Justin Robert Young? Uh Justin R Young, I think. Oh no, it says Robert up there. See he's a fucking Yeah, Justin schmuck. Robert Young. Justin Fireside Chat. Robert Young for the Who's the boss? Who's the boss? Is it who apostrophe is or who s apostrophe? Who is the boss? Well, that says belonging to, right? So, is it? I don't know. Well, it's a contraction, right? I don't know English. Who's you're the, the fucking. You're the fucking. Never mind. I'm a journalist. I'm a newspaper writing major, meaning that we have a copy desk that does grammar. I just talk to people and write. Whatever. Okay, join live on this URL for Who's the Bows podcast N A O with myself. Fireside. For a chat. fireside. Chat with Jaray, Justin R. Schmuck Young. I just, I just like the like Hera <laughs> whore and the germs. Oh my God! You need to burn in hell. I hate you so much. Chat. How about the chat? Okay, where's the where's chat? The, I don't see the chat. We're getting the chat going. The chat, hey, the let's chat. get the chat going. We're, We're getting the, the chat, chat, eh? The chat. Fireside chat sounds like Nazi propaganda. No, idiot. It was the opposite of Nazi propaganda. It was what FDR had. He had fireside chats on the radio. Did he? Yeah, he would encourage all American families to gather in front so of a fire. there aren't Jews in there? There's no Jews in that fire. In case anyone was wondering whether or not there were Jews in the fire, there's not. The booze has been flowing. <laughs> a little bit. Maybe. A little bit. Maybe a little bit of the booze has been flowing. Just a little bit. We went to a theater to see Django Unchained, and it served alcohol. Mm-hmm. And I learned you're really racist. How am I really racist? I didn't say anything racist during that movie. This time? Oh, stop it. I didn't say anything racist during Django Unchained. Sure, I loudly cried when the plantation owners died. <laughs> but that's not racist. <laughs> Tears aren't racist. <laughs> yeah, Leon, I, I, I just, just stood up and that. booed the screen when the plantation owners died. Boo! You're a villain, Django! <laughs> <laughs> Have you no heart? Okay, there, there are neighbors here. I don't own this place. Please don't get me kicked out before I move. How's the audio, guys? Because uh, we're going to record Who's the Boss on, on the onboard mic. So just give us a sound check. One, two. Check. Four. One, two. Check. Check. Why is your computer making noises? Well, that the whoop was uh, email okay, coming. Wow, in. you're really loud. Uh, you're just realizing this? Yes. As well as your racism. Oh, my. Oh, lordy, lordy. Okay, quit checking your email. I sorry. can't read the chat. All right, sorry. I didn't know if I had any interesting email. Uh, sounds like it's on an onboard mic. Okay, but if you guys can hear me, then that's the best we're going to do. To be honest with you, it's the best we're going to do. Uh, wow, I guess we're on, like, close to NSFW time on a different day. Yeah. We're on at 1030 Eastern time. And, and we're running, like, just a schedule late. Like NSFW. Yeah, right? no, we're actually like <laughs> shockingly close to actual NSFW time. Bribe right? What? Is Bribe here? Bribe is not here. Lies. Yeah, oh, no. Holy that. shit. Hey, it's Bribe There we go. Bill Meeks is here. 
so we're going to record our thoughts on, on who's the boss, but do you want to get warmed up by talking about Django Unchained, or do you want oh, to... Oh, I thought you were talking about the fire for a minute. Well, no, we're warmed up because we're by the fire. Go ahead. It's it, really move hot. Your, move your ass. Let's get a fire. Oh, no. Yeah, the other way. There, boom. That's a fire. Should we get it so it, like the fire is centered? I don't know. Probably. There we go. There, yeah, we, go. Yeah, there, there we go. Aww. Aww. Um, okay. Django right, so, Chains was really awesome. All right, so do you want to warm up talking about Django, and then we'll get into Doctor Who, and we'll start recording mm, Who's the Boss? Sure. What, what do you want to talk about, Django? It was um, good. It was really, really good. It was very, very Now, good. Let's, let's set this up, because I'm a super Tarantino crazy fan, and I've how many Quentin Tarantino movies have you seen? Two in total now. How many had you seen before we walked across the street and saw Django Unchained? One. Okay. <laughs> So you had not seen, and you had seen a later one, Inglorious Bastards, his most recent one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so to date, for people who are, are are watching, let's count Tarantino films as Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, Death Proof, Kill Bill 1, and Kill Bill 2, although we can actually just kind of make that one movie since it was written as one movie, uh, Inglorious Bastards, and Django Unchained. Right? Uh, and then also, let, let's even throw in True Romance, because that's a Tarantino script that he liked. And also, let's throw in Dust Till Dawn, since that is a Tarantino script that he liked. So let's say that if you were going to loosely define Tarantino movies, you were talking about nine movies. Somebody's saying nine and a fourth movies because he wrote one fourth of four rooms. Sure. I am deliberately not saying Natural Born Killers, because he hates Natural Born Killers. Even though he wrote the script, it was adapted by Oliver Stone, and he hates it, des despises it. Uh, so I'm not counting Natural Born Killers very deliberately. Okay. I'm a huge fan of everything he's done. Uh, I am very often times when I go see movies with Ashley, uh, I don't know whether or not she's going to like things, because you haven't seen a lot. Because I don't watch TV. The, or see movies. TV. Bigger screen. Okay, all right. Movies are not TV. Bigger screen. No. All right. So, what were, on a scale of 1 to 10, what did you think of Django Unchained? I put it at a 10. I thought it was really, really good. I really liked of it. Of all the movies the you've seen this year. It's my favorite. The by favorite. Far. By far. What did you Dra like about it? Drama was high. Um, I learned to love racism because of you, so the racism was high. It was great. It was... <laughs> no, one, I wasn't... All right. You're just building it up. You're acting like this is a running joke. It's not a running joke. It's just something that you're saying because no, people will keep calling no, you no, racist they, online. They do anyway. No, um, the drama was really high, so I liked that. Sure. And intense. So, like, I don't know. Usually gore doesn't bother me in movies, I yeah. guess. Um... But I felt like it was much more emotionally attached. Yeah. And I don't know how to explain it other than that, so it bothered me a little bit more. There's, so a, there's some pretty right? brutal, uh, and I don't want to get into many plot points, because I, I want everybody to be able to go see it, and so I don't want to talk about the plot really much at all, except to say that if you are like me, and you're a big Tarantino fan, I would just say it's the movie he was born to make. I don't think that it's his best movie, Pulp Fiction is still his best movie, I think it will always be his best movie. But, I don't know if anybody could do a movie like this. Ashley's now in typing. Sorry. Um, I read the chat. I'm like you. I hear things. Okay, continue. Um, I'm going to turn on the fire, it's hot. Okay. And it's apparently catching everything else on fire. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's so good. All the performances are amazing. It's just the best. Uh, all right. So, with that being said, we can start talking about Doctor Who. We can. Are we recording it? Let's record. You should do you ready? that. This is going to be, be, for the record, problem if we didn't. <laughs> this is going to be an episode of our podcast, Who's the Boss, on the Frog Pants Recording Network. Oh. Uh, so, uh, go ahead and subscribe to us on iTunes if you like Doctor Who Talk. And uh, we're going to talk Dr. Who. We're going to talk about the Christmas episode specifically. Here's a little podcast about Dr. Who. You want to hear it? Here it goes.
Do you remember your intro? Barely. I'll bullshit it. Go ahead. Hey everybody, my name's Ashley Paramore, and I am here with my partner in crime, Justin Robert Young, for Who is the Boss? Or Who's the Boss? Like a boss. Who the Boss? Who the Boss? Who the Boss? Podcast where we talk about what's new and who. We've been on quite a bit of a hiatus lately uh, because there's been a little break in the season until yeah. uh, the most recent Christmas special. What's up with British night? people and their shows? They're the worst, aren't they? Yeah. No, they, they have shows and then they go away. For, like, forever. They're not like American shows where it's like, hey, you're going to do the show for a little bit, and then you're going to come back. Do you even know how long it was? Because I have no idea. It was just too damn long. That's all I remember. Well, I guess the the last last one was... Jesus, I can't even remember. Maybe early October? Was it that long ago? It was certainly before Halloween. Wow, we're getting old. Well... Um... (laughs) No, I mean, no. it was six weeks from, because we had the first episode during Dragon Con. Remember, we watched it at Dragon Con. Yeah, that's right. So it was that's six right, weeks right. from there. Yeah. So, so that was, was August into September. So it was like mid-September. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so we're, we're So here. we're back. But what, 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 is, what matters now is we're back. And we miss you. We it's miss you. While. Yeah. So um, we're going to talk what about... What do you want to talk about? <laughs> Irma Gerd. I think we're going to talk about the Christmas special. But before we talk about the Christmas special, I thought that it would be fun to talk about some of the things leading up into the Christmas special, which we discussed earlier, because they had a couple of um, pre- previews to the Christmas special. Yeah. Um, uh, there was the first one, which... Minnesotes, really. Minnesotes. That's what they called them. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's a technical term. I don't know, because I don't watch TV, as we no. discussed earlier, so I don't know what that's about. Well, except we're doing a television podcast. We're doing a commentary podcast about a television show, so you can't hide behind the I don't watch TV thing. I watch my laptop. Okay. Well, now you're, you're parsing time. sentiment and okay. splitting hairs. All right. Well, whatever. So, the Minnesota. Yeah. Um, so do you want to kind of uh, brief a couple of minisodes real quick? And well, let's just go over what, what kind of preceded this episode, specifically mm-hmm. the minisodes. So, uh, and really, I'll tell you what, I'll even go back further, because what this episode represents, probably more importantly in, in the larger Doctor Who story, is the introduction of a new companion. The companions kind of mark eras in the show, Right. And we first kind of heard that uh, Jenna Coleman Lewis. Jenna Louise Coleman. Jenna Louise Coleman. She does have a name. She does have a name, and I got it right after you corrected me. Uh, Jenna Louise Coleman was going to be the the new uh, companion before the fall episodes. We we saw pictures, and and she had pictures in front of the TARDIS. It was a huge spoiler on the internet. Huge spoiler on the internet. And then we were all shocked to see that she was in Asylum of the Daleks as yeah. Oswin Oswald. Right? Mm-hmm. So really that, that begins kind of our, our pre-information to this particular episode. We or have the, as we're corrected now, as Clara Oswin Oswald. Well, and, and, well we, we find out in this episode is, is Clara Oswin Oswald, but we will get to that in a second. We see the Minnesotes. The Minnesotes might only introduce... The fact that uh, the doctor has become very, very morose after the ponds, the pond debacle, that old pond chestnut that happened, which I think he was really just disappointed because that episode sucked ass. Yeah, it really, really did. He was just sitting in his TARDIS. I, I mean, don't know why this episode sucked so bad. Oh, it was so bad across I'm the, the board. I'm the doctor, man. And who turns the Statue of Liberty into an angel that doesn't move when you don't look at it? And, like, so many bad things. Let me We're just not say gonna this. Talk about it. it's an no, attack. you want to know what? No. Fuck it. We will talk about it. No. Because we had to watch it before we watched this episode, and God. it was garbage. If I thought it was garbage when I first saw it, I thought it was double garbage when I saw it again. So it can jump in the lake, and I hope the lake is filled with AIDS. Um, but anyway, this episode... Doctor very, very morose. We also see the introduction of Lady Vostra, Strax, and some lady who is our, our, our sidekicks to, to this particular episode. Some lady? Lady uh, Vastra's uh, uh, down-ass bitch. Her wife. 
Yeah, her wife, as we learned. Yes. Um, can I just say this? And and, and holler if you, holler if you're with me on this. I kind of, I was bothered by this in, in the second Minnesota. The second Minnesota features Lady Vostra talking to a Scotland Yard And La- Lady Vostra, for those of you who don't remember, is the lizard face lady. Yeah. Um, the, they kind the of. Silurians, I believe. Silurians. Silurians, I they, believe. <laughs> no, so they were in like the, the old school Doctor Who, but they reappeared in the episode uh, The Hungry Earth is when they first came back. They're really they cool. weren't new. I thought they were new. No, they they're like new villains. I'm pretty sure they're old school. Um, but they they relaunched. I might be making that up. I think Cyrulians were a, a new who. Oh, people are saying redone. Okay. Ha. All right. Um. So yeah, Lady Vostra is a Cyrulian. Um, they're classic villains. People are saying. Uh. So it's Lady Vostra, who is a Sherlock Holmesian kind of figure. Uh, that is a comparison that is hammered in more concretely in the episode itself. But there is a crutch in Moffat's writing, and this is what I think it is. When he needs someone to be just a little bit more interesting, he makes them gay, and very specifically, not it doesn't matter, whatever, he makes them gay, that's fine. It's just that when they're gay, they put... He puts them in these situations where the characters have to announce they're gay, or they they're like like yes, like also he is my okay. wife, we, we and then arguing. and then they have they have people react the way that white people react in rap videos, which is to be like whoa, All right. whoa, two things. Whoa, whoa, whoa. two things. We were arguing about this earlier, right? And so one, I actually kind of liked this Minnesota because yeah. Um, more often than not, when you bring gay couples into, not particularly the Doctor Who universe, but any time you're dealing with media, when you bring them into a joke, they wind up usually being the butt of the joke in a negative way. So I was very happy that they weren't. Second, which was my point. Yeah. So was I. The talking, first 75,000 times he did it. No, okay. This was my point earlier, and that was that... What other time has this been done? You could argue Captain Jack, but Captain Jack just fucks everything. Like, what other time does... I feel like it's been done more times than this. I just feel like it... Somebody help me out. Holler if you hear me. Let me know if I'm being crazy. But I feel like it's been done more than once. And I feel like it's been done more than once in episodes for which he's been the writer. I just think you're making up stuff at this point. Well, because all right. you don't like gays. lesbians and I love too. gays and lesbians. All right. All right. Anyway, um, Let's get I into think the you're episode. wrong because you can't give me an example. Let's yeah, so the episode. The episode. Uh, snowman. 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 Uh, so the TLDR of the episode. Scale, scale of 1 to 10. Get your hands up. And give it, let's go ahead. At the same I don't time, want to rate it, it because I'm still let's undecided. Let's give it a scale. Let's give it a scale. Are you ready? We have to give You can't be undecided. We're on a fucking podcast. Are you ready? Uh, all right. On the count of three, we're going to rate it. Okay? Three. Look at me. Look at me. You can't look at the screen. One, two, three. Nine. All right. You're a little better than I'm at. I'm at a seven. I'm Nine. at a seven on this episode. I went higher. Uh, and, 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 and Which is unusual, because I usually rate everything higher. Normally, I'm more of a critical uh, uh, sort toward the Doctor and his adventures, and, and you are not. Now, we were kind of of the same mind that we did not love the first part of this season. Outside of Asylum of the Daleks. Which was amazing, think, which yeah, was amazing, by it, the way. Loved it, One loved of the it. best Doctor Who episodes I've seen in a very long time. I don't think that either of us were gigantic fans of any of the subsequent episodes. And we were both markedly disappointed with the Daleks Take Manhattan. Not yes. Daleks. Angels. Angels Take Manhattan. <laughs> the Derlicks. The Derlicks. The Derlicks. The Get out of the Derlick. Um So. This episode, I loved. I really, really liked. To me, it. I'll tell you what, and I'll, I'll make it simple, baby. There's two episodes I've liked this season. Solomon and Daleks and The Snowman. What's the common denominator? Oswin, baby. The OE. The OE is here. The Oswin era. 
It's having it. It's on and popping. <sighs> no, I love Oswin. I really, really do. But the thing that bothered me about this episode is that and I don't even want to say it was in a negative way, but it went in a completely different direction than I expected it to. Yeah. Because typically, when the doctor talking this when the doctor picks up with the these uh, picks up these companions, um, they're kind of coming out of the blue. He comes to them. Yeah. This time, she is from the get go for some unknown reason. It seems like obsessively going to him. Yeah. Instead of him like going literally to the first second we see. Uh, we see her, she's following the doctor. Yeah. She's literally leaving her job as a barmaid to go follow him. Now we find out that she has a shadowy, murky kind of past, and, and we don't quite know why she's also a barmaid and a governess. Um, but yeah, no, it's... it's. I guess she... I, I guess the episode and what was going into her wasn't what I expected to be, because I expected it to be like... Any of the other companions, which from the get-go, this is something that's very, very different. Something is very different about Oswin, which we kind of learn um, going through to the end of the episode. Because as we learn in the Asylum of the Daleks, at the end of the episode, she was she was not a Dalek. Uh, but no. she, she was a Dalek, and she died She was the made end. a Dalek, yeah. And then yeah. she got blown up on the planet like every other Dalek. But Spoiler! But in this episode, we get to the end, she dies again. Just like Rory. All right. Don't give me that. No, no, she's going to... I thought we were living such a peaceful life without Rory. God, I'm so happy to get rid of Rory. She's a much hotter, sexier Rory. <sighs> who probably is going to die just as much, if not more, than him. No, uh, she is uh, better than Rory on every level. Because she's... Funny and interesting and awesome. And I'm like dying. bumbling idiot moron waste of lines Rory, who ruined the only interesting dynamic got, about Amy Pond. He got so much better throughout the series, though. Oh, he got Mom. Less, like, oh my God. Well, you don't like River Song either, so you suck. Um, no, sweetie. <laughs> but just as who <laughs> wants the rub lotion on my ass elbows, sweetie? No. no. <laughs> Is that racist? So, Max Shadow, is that racist? <laughs> <laughs> oh my. So what are the I guess what are the highlights for you that you really liked about this episode? What was it that you would give it a nine for? Because it was so different for me that it really threw me for a whirlwind where I'm I'm hesitant to give it above a seven. Uh here's what I really, really liked about it. And, and there are things that were not positive. The villain was stupid. Uh, you the know. villain was really stupid. But I think it, it was it, well. I mean, like the henchmen were stupid. The name, the titular villain, which is the snowmen, were dumb. They were they were kind of toothless. They really didn't have any bite. Uh, even the the ice governess was was not really helpful. But I will say before you go on, I thought it was really interesting that they went back and and pulled a villain from the past. Yeah, so uh, we, we get our first reimagined look at the Great Intelligence, uh, which is an old Doctor Who villain and is voiced by Sir Ian McKellen, who, as we know, is acting. See, when I act, I take the lines and I pretend I'm them. Why are you talking funny? Because that was, it was a very funny scene from a show called Extras. I've never heard of it before. We're going to watch the scene, but it's very, right. very funny. All right. Uh, but, yeah, so uh, Ian McKellen is... Um, oh, was that actually the Sherlock music that came up when he came into the... Uh, when he came into the, uh, the, the I house? I think it might have been, actually. Was it? Yeah. People are saying yes in the chat room. That was awesome. Yeah. Anyway, uh, continue. So, anyway, uh, I just like the fact that it felt... Like, it had a plan, and it feels like we have a plan 
with this season. I like the idea that Oswin is a mysterious companion. I like the idea that there's uh, that I it wasn't just thrown into there like in one episode. It's just like what? Who is she? I don't know. I guess we'll follow her for the rest of the season. I would have liked we to got... see them. I would have liked to see them hold off for another episode on the Doctor realizing who Oswin is. I would have liked to have seen that because we <sighs> we all know in the audience that Oswin is the Oswin in in the Derlick. Uh, the, the Dalek. But I thought that it could have held off another episode, which is something that we disagreed I, on earlier. Yeah, no, I don't... Because, like, there's no payoff beyond, like, what? It's her? All right! And, and, like, his discovering that it's the Dalek girl is the basis of our mystery. Because otherwise we just know. But, like, the fact that he knows and now he's the Doctor and he can get to the bottom of this, that starts that mystery. So if we went through more episodes without him knowing it, then he can't be getting to the bottom of it. So therefore, we have to be going through episodes that don't deal with what we, as an audience, really want to know, which is, who the fuck is this bitch? She's a mystery, as it turns out. Working which on a mystery. Why, I, I don't know. So here's the thing I love about Doctor Who and, and sometimes hate about it. it. It seems like, at least through the Moffat series, um, not necessarily this season, but in the past, he's been really good for the most part, about making you think that one thing's going to happen and something else happens. Yeah. Which I loved about Asylum of the Daleks. Because I, I had no idea that Oswin had become a Dalek. Until sure. Until later. There were a lot of little hints. Yeah. And then you find out, and it's like, Irma Gerd. Um, in this case, it, it was just so off par. It didn't feel like it was leading me to one thing and then it was the other. It just seemed so... I have no effing clue what even might be going on. And there, there was a, I, I feel fair, like there was a lot more uncertainty by the end of this episode to where I would have liked to have had a little more hints, even though they were misleading. Does well, that make sense? But, but, but to be fair, like for old Doctor Who watchers, the great intelligence revelation was a, like, buh kind of moment. It was written as a buh kind of moment. So maybe we should talk a little bit more about the great intelligence here. Or Well, I don't know what more to talk about it other than it was voiced by Sir Ian McKellen and it was an old Doctor Who villain because I haven't seen the old Doctor Who episodes. I just know it was an old Doctor Who villain. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is a anamorphic idea that tries to consistently find permanent form. And so it's found permanent form, I guess, in two other episodes back in the day. Um, but now, I are here. Here are the bigger ideas with this episode. Number one, I feel that for all intents and purposes, this episode is the beginning of what will be our countdown to uh, the 50th anniversary. I, I agree with that. I, so I can totally agree. The storyline that. that begins tonight will run through to the 50th anniversary. And I believe that uh, it is based in Oswin. No, I, I can totally go for that, because not only are we pulling old villains, um, I think that there's... Well, and we were kind of, you know, checking out the Doctor Who Reddit earlier today. We were. Kind of reading a yeah. number of hypotheses. Um, but I can totally, totally see that this would lead up to the 50th anniversary. Now, P. Dallahendi says, I think it's pretty clear that the first question is all leading up to 50. Uh, I actually kind of disagree. I tend to believe that the first question is done. I think we're done with the first question. I think that the first question was asked when the <laughs> stupid head in the box asked it, and we're done with the first question storyline. I think that what starts now is is uh, our our 50th anniversary storyline. And I kind of agree with that, too, because I think, as much as I would like to think that they're not done with that storyline, but I think it was a shitty ending to, I don't know, like a failed storyline? I don't know how else to put it. Like, it was kind of the, the pun, her, 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 Doctor Who. Uh, yeah. You know, that's the question that must But they've be always asked. done that. Forever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean... And also, like, what does that mean when the question's asked, or what is it, when the question's answered, the silence falls? I don't know. 
Yeah, but the, the silent storylines kind of dropped off, and I, I feel like that and the, you know, the question that, you know, must never be asked thing, um, that storyline was kind of bullshitted, ended in the same way that I Harry, hope it's done. It's a dumb storyline. In the same way the that... The silence blows. In the same way... You keep cutting me off. I hate you. In the same way that Rory and Amy was ended, I feel like that um, was answered. So now I think you and I, at least, are both ready to go on to a new storyline and forget about the bullshit storyline that was the a the end of the Amy and Rory saga, that was the end of the question, that was the end of the silence. Even though I think the silence would have been a cooler, longer-running villain. Yeah. It can't go to hell. It had one good episode. Uh, yeah, so here's the deal. You don't want to kiss the doctor on Christmas. Oh, yeah. We talked about that. It's true. Because this is twice that I can count in, in the modern era where somebody kisses the doctor on Christmas and doesn't survive the episode. Happens to Oswin this episode. Happens to Kylie Minogue on the fucking spaceship Titanic. Dead. Oh, wait. Did he kiss Donna? No, I don't think he kissed Donna. Did he kiss Donna? If Donna kissed him, No, because Donna... Count. Which was the Donna Christmas episode? Was that the, um, well, where she got married? I don't think so. Uh, I don't remember. Um, yeah, it was the bride. And he definitely didn't kiss her there. Yeah. It was the Runaway Bride episode. And, no, Kylie Minogue kissed him. Oswin kissed him. Boom. Dead as doornails. The both of them. I'll tell you what, man, Moffat does have a, he has a weakness for, uh, he has a weakness for kind of the maudlin, for the, uh, for the tugging at the heartstrings. There's only one track this powerful, a whole family crying on Christmas Eve. By the way, that point, <laughs> which we disagreed on earlier today, what? too. So, the whole family crying The whole family on crying. Eve. Oh, it was oh, the whole family crying on Christmas Eve. Um, no, it wasn't. I thought that it was blunt that it wasn't the whole family crying. It was the fact that Oswin was crying. Because earlier in the episode two, Doctor was like, hey, you know, envision them melting type of thing, and they disappear. Yeah. Right? Because she melts them with her brain. Yeah. Um, but in this instance too, instance, too, where she's crying... They also disappear. I don't think it had anything to do with the family. I think it all goes back to Oswin. You mean that was a feint? I think it was, that a, was a, a bullshit feint. lead. I think it was a bullshit lead. I think it has to do with Oswin. I really do. Um, and I think that the great intelligence is going to tie very, very much into Oswin. Uh, true or false? Do you have to answer right now? Will, will we see the great intelligence before the end of this season? No, yeah, it's an audio podcast, sweetheart. You have to say it. No, I was trying to get them to answer. With a yes. Okay, a it's yes. an audio podcast. Yes, right? Well, I... Whatever. Open this bottle of mead for me. Thank you. See, people are saying 50th anniversary app. I don't think so. Just because I feel like the 50th anniversary app has to be a bigger villain. A bigger villain than the intelligence? Oh, hell yeah. I, it's got to be the Master of the Daleks. One of the two. Those are the two big, uh, the two big villains. The Master and the Daleks. Those are your heavyweights. Those are your A-listers. Those are your creme de la creme. The number one stunners. The Daleks and the Master. Okay. To there's say only that, two. To say that the, there's the only Master two. writing a Dalek, says Curly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Or okay. uh, a British um, video says 50th anniversary app equals Doctor takes on the Borg. Okay, so to say that there's just two, the Daleks and the Master, I mean, come on, the Daleks, as much as I love them, as much as they're my fun, iconic villain, they're totes, they're totes BS. Because they, they always lose. You need, at this point, they're, they're so iconic and funny and awesome, and I love them, but they're not a headlining villain. 
You've got to have. No, they're the headlining villain. Like no, all right, no, 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 no. no, no. You can not. have you can have no. your problems with them. You and I think rightfully so. You can say that specifically the Daleks that writers paint themselves in the corners and they have no idea what to do with them and they're very very hard villains to write and oftentimes we get shitty episodes because of them. But they're like Hulk Hogan. Like Hulk Hogan was a shitty wrestler, but there's no denying the fact that he was the biggest draw. He was always the number one guy, and 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 the Daleks and the Master are the number one villain. There's no way around that. You know, the only way that I can think of the Daleks kind of making a real comeback in a different way yeah, is when we saw Asylum of the Daleks. One thing that Oswin did that was interesting, and I think this will play into future episodes with the Daleks, yeah. is Oswin made the Daleks forget Doctor the Doctor. Who. Yeah. And he, he kind of freaked out a little bit like you made them forget me. Now, who, um, who, so maybe, who can make maybe them, they will make a comeback. Who can make them remember? The Master. There's no way we're not well, the, seeing the, the Master. The intelligence. Oh, where are you pulling the Master from this? Because the great intelligence doesn't necessarily have to do with the Master. I think, if anything, the only thing that would make the Daleks remember is the intelligence. Do you right? want to make a bet that we're going to see the Master before the 50th episode? 50th anniversary, rather? I will bet you right now that we will see the Master before... <laughs> The 50th anniversary episode. How much? Name your, name your stakes. Rent? No. Um. God. <laughs> I'm already paying rent. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't think we'll see the master for the 50th episode. I don't, before. I really don't. Before the 50th episode. I don't think episode. we'll see it before. I don't. Wow. No, not the same actor. I don't think it's going to be the same actor. No, it, it doesn't have to be the same actor. I don't think the master will make... Um, the reappearance for the 50th episode. What are we shaking on? What are we shaking Name on? Name your steaks. I don't eat steak. What am I, what are we shaking on? Oh, Chimera uh, 98 uh, says Tenant as the master. That would be Oh, boom. Tenet. Boom. Oh my God. I would, I would quit this podcast. No, I wouldn't. I think, I think we're going to see um, Tenant. We're going to see oh, Tenet. We'll, we'll see Tenet. And we'll, before we'll the 50th. We'll probably yeah. see Eccleston, too, because they're both around. But Well, um, most of them. I mean, how, many, how many doctors? I think there's, what, five doctors still alive? Five or six doctors still alive? Well, I think we'll see Tenet and Eccleston for sure, because they're both the new wave doctors. Although, is Eccleston, is he kind of still, because they didn't, he didn't leave who on good terms, Eccleston. He didn't? No, no, he didn't. Well, in any case doesn't matter. Um, so I don't think the Master will, will appear before the 50th episode. Whatever you want to bet. I'm betting it. A fine bottle of wine from Napa Valley. A fine Napa Valley bottle of wine. Uh, audio listeners, the shaking is now happening. How about a bottle of port and a poorly rolled blunt? I'm R.L. Stein. I live alone. I make bets about Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> so... There we go. Everybody let us know in the chat room whether or not you think that's a dumb move by Ashley because I think it's a it's really dumb move. Totally not a dumb move. Uh, you, we said before the 50th episode. We didn't say on. Oh, yeah, no, before. Yeah, okay, before. Leading up to or before. So, um, do you have anything looking forward, I guess? So, you know, so I'm a little more upset with the Christmas episode because I, I thought it was just so weird and different. And I, I guess I Way should, better I than last say year's though, right? Way better than last year's episode for sure, but I thought it was... And the year before, the best Matt Smith Christmas special. I think it's easy to say yeah. the best Matt Smith Christmas special. For sure. I thought, I thought that it was the best Matt Smith Christmas special. I thought it was way different, and maybe to a certain degree that's good. Yeah. That it's way different than what I've expected. Um, sure. But I guess looking forward from here, what is the thing that you're looking forward the most to? What do you think is going to happen going forward? What do you? Um, I believe that Oswin is a very mythological uh, companion, to which I mean that she fits into the show's mythology. Uh, her origin will tell us something about the Doctor himself, or somebody who means harm to the Doctor. Uh, 
So, yeah, I mean, I, I look forward to not knowing. And I'll tell you what, here's, we talked a lot about the great question. Here is what I very much am excited about this half of the season. There's an interesting question for which I am interested to find the answer. Like, at the beginning, when we first watched Asylum of the Daleks, I was very interested at the idea of Amy and Rory being divorced. That we had a season of, you know, uh, the married couple on the TARDIS. What about the divorced couple on the TARDIS? I was excited about that. Unfortunately, they decided to wrap up that storyline in like 15 minutes. So we that didn't get to see bullshit. any more of that. They were like back together and everything was handy dandy within, you know, the, the 30 minutes before the episode was over. Uh, I'm interested to know who Osman is. And I'm excited to see what happens. I'm excited to see that wrapped around cool individual episodes. I'm definitely excited that she seems way different. Um, and I hope that she's not, like, the female counterpart of Rory, where she just dies. So, didn't we have a bet on that, whether or not she dies more than twice? Oh, no, yeah, no. So we made a bet. Um, uh, we already made one big bet this episode. I don't know if we're willing to make no, another one. No, no, we're but, not. Uh, we're, uh, consider us odds makers. Let us know in the chat room. Here's the line. Oswin, 1.5 deaths. Before the end of this season, over or under? Right in the chat room. Over or under or, 1.5 deaths. Or you can also tweet us at Healthy Addict or Justin R. Young. There we and go. let us know. Absolutely. <laughs> and we're getting even action. Already. We're getting <laughs> even action right now. We're getting overs. We're getting unders. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'll tell you what. I, I am super excited about the Oswin character. Yeah. Because when I first saw her in Asylum of the Daleks, I mean, I, I thought she was fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to see where she goes going forward. And it, we, we talked about this again earlier to where I thought going into the Christmas special is that Asylum of the Daleks was going to be like when we were, I think, first introduced to River, when River died. Was that the first yeah. episode she came in? To where uh, I thought The first that episode for River was with Tenant with the library. Okay, well, anyway, but that ended with River dying, right? That it, was ended, it ended with her dying. So I thought... Oh, so awesomely. All right, shut up. Oh, my God. I know you hate River. We don't care. So... Did we almost have it all? So... A Doctor Who without River! Hi. I'm on this podcast, too. <laughs> so, um, anyway... Oswin, I thought what was going to happen is kind of what happened with River when we were introduced to her, is that, hey, we're seeing the end of Oswin's timeline where she dies. Yeah. And now we see the Christmas special to where she dies again, which was really, really confusing. Yeah. But where I thought this was going to be actually the beginning of her timeline with the Doctor instead of the end. So I'm really curious to see where this goes, to see if how much the great intelligence has to play with this. I And, like... It, it's probably going to be a ongoing villain, too, which is really exciting. Um, I don't know. Um, do you have any other notes on the episode? I know we've kind of been all over the place, and not just this episode, because it seems like there's a lot going on. I'm excited. Yeah, you know, and, and this is, you know, uh, I guess like, like, a, like a halftime show for the season, you know. It, it's right in the middle of it. Uh, we have until mm -hmm. April, right? Is it April? Yeah, I think April is when they come oh, back. Oh, I hate Doctor Who. We've got forever. Forever. Oh, um, wait, can I say Oswin had some really crappy lines? What? Okay, okay, not maybe crappy lines, but the timing. The timing of the lines. What do you mean? Like, terrible. So Don't you talk about my Oswin like that. No, I will. Don't. I will. Don't. I will talk about her and you can't stop me. I love Oswin. So Oswin, you know, her and Asylum of the Derelicts and... Uh, Souffles. Yeah. Souffle girl, right? Yeah. She brought that out, up out of the blue when she first entered the new TARDIS. Oh, and we didn't talk about the new TARDIS. Okay, we can talk about that in a minute. But she brought right. that up out of the blue, and then when she was dying, like, remember me, run, type of thing, when it seemed totally out of place. That seemed, those lines seemed so out of place to me. Um... I thought it was okay. 
I mean, it's Doctor Who. Oh, the dialogue's God. always going to be a little cheesy. It like, was way... It it's, was, a, it's always high adventure. So, like, they shoehorn a line in here and again. Whatever. By the way, so, wait, that bothers you? And the million times people are like, Doctor Who! Doctor Who! Get it? It's the name of the show! Win! So better than Buffy. Okay. So, so better than Buffy? Yeah. Okay. Let's not bring up another can of worms. So, anyway, new TARDIS. Oh, Buffy's awesome. And also, the silence sucked because they ripped off the gentleman from Buffy. And that's that. I don't even know that's that is. That's a fact. Like Agnes, Agatha, Jermaine, and Jack. Fact. Here's the deal. Um, new TARDIS. Yay or nay? Yay. Big time okay, yay. Okay. Big so time yay. When I first saw, because I spend way too much time on the Doctor Who Reddit, when I first saw the picture, I thought it looked like shit. Yeah. I thought it looked terrible. I thought the costume looked horribly terrible in contrast. But when I saw it on film, I thought it was way better. And I think that for the haters, it's going to be a lot like... Hater in the house. I think it's going to be a lot like any time a new damn doctor comes in. Yeah. To where, at the beginning, you're going to be like, oh, my God. Oh my god, this this schmuck, this schlemiel. He's this not schmuck. as good as Tennant. And then you're going to grow to love them in their own special, unique way. So I'm actually really excited that the Gallifreyan up near the top, I thought, yeah. was a neat little touch. Um, so it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And I think we were talking about, or you have mentioned, that the costume that he's wearing now, the outfit is going to we'll, be a we'll continual probably thing. probably say, and if you watch the... the uh, upcoming, or the, the Super Tease trailer, he has more of the same that he was wearing now more than his his old kind of outfit. Uh, let me just say this about the new TARDIS. I love it because I fucking hated the old TARDIS. I thought the old TARDIS looked like Pee Wee's Playhouse, and every time they pulled out a fucking squeaky mallet to hit a rubber duck to get into hyperspace, it bothered the shit out of me. I disagree. It was really annoying. I disagree completely. Like, I thought it was really, really fun. Um, I don't know. I really, I actually really liked Matt I Smith's hated. interaction. I hated. With the rubber duck. And they always the ran into it like, oh, like, let me twist the Play-Doh wheel and then we'll get into the fucking next star system. Fuck I, that noise. I, this actually looks like a spaceship. I like the fact that it looks like a spaceship. I like, and I hope that he continues to be, and I think it has nothing to do with what tools are on the console, but I like how interactive, much more interactive, Matt Smith was with the TARDIS console. Even if it was cranking a wheel and stupid, silly shit, fine. But you could tell it, it was fun. Yeah. It was much more interactive. It, 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 it than looks some more like doctor. the Eccleston uh, tenant TARDIS, right? Yeah. They were saying they were literally child's toys in the last one. Fuck that. He's a goddamn Time Lord, thousands of years old. What are you doing playing with kids' toys? That's some creepy shit. For fun? You get bored after 900, 1,000 years. You go full circle. Peter Lenny said it was a larger, more awe-inspiring room before. This looks tiny. I, I understand that. Tiny. I mean, uh, but no, no, no. But, like, to me, I feel like that, that works. Like, I like the fact that it has a bit more of a... I, I understand that the, the space element is different. And that gave... I like the idea that it looked like a more spacious uh, kind of set before. But I also hated the fact that you were, you know, like, punching a sugar cube that uh, hit a one of those ducks that kept drinking water, and that's the way that we could escape the Cybermen. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it's fun. Again, we disagree, but I'm right, so it doesn't matter. As always. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this episode of Who's the Boss. If you'd like to get in touch with us, go ahead and follow us on Twitter. Uh, I'm Justin R. Young, and the lovely lass to my right is at Healthy Addict. Ashley Paramore and Justin R. Young, respectively. And let us know what you think uh, about the interior of the TARDIS or about the OE, the Oswin era. Yeah, or the, the over-under. Talk about OEs. The over, or OU. The OU. <laughs> uh, the the over-under. By the way, if you don't know, somebody was saying, I think Bill Meeks was saying, I don't know what an over-under is. Here's what an over-under is. In sports, 
An over-under is the number that is projected to be the addition of both teams' scores. So let's say we're playing hockey. I scored three. Is that Askew scored? scored five. Then the over-under would be, or the, the actual score would be eight. But the over-under could be set at nine, and you would lose, or seven, and you would win. Uh, so there we go. And the over-under of how many times Oswin will die before the end of this season is officially on this podcast set at 1.5. So if she dies once, you still might lose if you bet the over. If she dies twice, you win if you have the over. So there you go. There you go. And in general, we are very curious to hear about what you think about the episode, uh, especially if you think Jess is wrong and that it's not as good as other episodes that we've seen. Shut your mouth. What? What? Anyway, uh, it's been a great time with you all here on Who's the Mouse? Yeah. Uh, podcast. Uh, any any last words? So follow us on the Twitter twatters we were talking about. Jay, Justin. More Robert. Oswin, less river. What? Yeah. What? Less we can see a river, more we can see of Oswin, the better this half season will be. Do we have a sign off? Really, What's our sign off for this? We, I we forgot to sign off. don't, but I really hope that River is brought back several times just to you. I hope so. Do we have a sign off? Somebody tell us in the chat room if we have a sign off. I'm Ashley Paramore. I'm Justin Robert Young. And uh, we don't have a sign off. We forgot the sign off if we had one. Who's the mouse? Who? Who? <laughs> That's a, the new sign up out here. Let's do it again. Here we go. The new sign up is going to be... All right, I'll do it. Is it? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm Justin Robert Young. I'm Ashley Paramore. Who? Who? <laughs> That's a really shitty sign off. <laughs> Are we going to stay live for a little bit? Yeah, we're staying oh. live. Oh. <laughs> Doctor. Who? No, I, I, li- I like that double Doctor! Who? Oh, my. Totes shitty. That's how I felt. <laughs> ah, oh, my gird. So there we go, folks. Hopefully we'll have our shit more together next episode. No, I feel like that was good. I like that. I like it when it's relaxed. We we went on a bunch of rants. I, you were right. So we went to go see Django. And we did. before then, we were ranting about Doctor Who for an hour. Just was like, we totally need to record podcasts. We totally, and I'm like, no. It's thing, actually yeah. more frustrating than that. I said, well, as soon as we got home, we should record the podcast. And you're like, no, 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 no. And then we started arguing about Doctor Who like 15 minutes later. And I'm like, we should really record the podcast. And you're like, no, 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 no. And then it was like too late. Yeah, it would have been way better if we had that recorded. Yeah. But I am a terrible human being. I think this was good, though. It was good. I don't know. What did you guys think? Yay or nay? Thumbs up, thumbs oh, down. Come on. Of course. I mean, they're here watching it. If they didn't want to watch it and didn't like it, they would have left. Yay, nay. You can type yay, nay. And if it's terrible, see, boo. <laughs> Meeks hates that. Meeks, all right. Meeks is trying Our to fuck life, with us. My life is over. I'm going to... Meeks is, is ignoring her. raising his children so he can watch us. <laughs> oh, that's why I love Meeks. Um, we should kill ourselves. Our lives have no meaning. Thanks, Patrick. Oh, P. Oh, P. Diddy. Cat. Cat's banging on the the, the fireside there. Um, what are you guys going to I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll be on until we finish this glass of mead. I like talking to the chat room. <laughs> I'm not going to throw the cat. It's not my cat. I'll see. See if I can get She's her. got a little jingle bell on her. Um, how are you guys doing? Rock and rolling? Having a good time? Oh, man. <clears throat> yes, I'm feeling better, Tensor Guy. Uh, way better. I'm not feeling like I'm dying now, so that's a good sign. Um, are there fun announcements? Do we have anything fun to say? I have fun things to say. Well, we have an apartment. Is that a fun announcement? Yes. Announce it. We have an apartment. Yeah, so, we are moving, uh, all right, listen, I, I hope you guys all knew that uh, I am living in Oakland, and uh, I'm living with Brett and Katie, and Brett and Katie are getting married, so uh, I'm moving out, 
because nobody wants to get married and have me in their house, let alone me and whatever random coos I bring <laughs> into the house. Um, so uh, I had to get another apartment, and, uh, you know, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard not living with Brett and Katie because we're you living a full you, block you away. You don't like me? <laughs> Oh. Uh, no, yeah, we're moving like a foo, uh, like a block away, like literally yeah, like a block literally away. Literally on the same street. <laughs> it's on the same street. Brett and Katie live on one part, and then there's one block of houses, and then literally like the next building is where, where all we're the living. hipsters come out. It turns out it's a pretty hip apartment. But uh, yeah, I sent the uh, the bathroom's purple. A very silly bathroom. A hilariously silly bathroom. Well, I'll, I'll tweet pictures of the bathroom. It's really ridiculous. Is Tom my landlord again? No. My God, I wish Tom was still my landlord. But unfortunately, I have to uh, move out, and Tom will not be my landlord. And it'll be very annoying, because I don't think I'll be able to record a podcast about, you know, Balrogs getting suspended from the league for fighting with Gandalf in the same way I was with Tom. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's gonna be awesome. Is there anything else to say about that? So fucking cool. We have the hipster apartment. We have a hip apartment. Oh it's my gonna, god! It's a railroad all the hip, apartment. All the hipsters come out of it. What? Oh my gosh! It's so funny. What? Is there something that you want to say that you don't know? Something you special about say? the apartment in the advertising that I probably shouldn't say. Oh god, yeah, no, you should totally say that. So, I can't say that? Yeah. So, the apartment... I mean, it's on Craigslist. And the like Craigslist they, People ad, don't always see the Craigslist ad. The apartment in the Craigslist ad was advertised um, for bachelors that were specifically... Um, well, for, right. well, well, let me just say this. Uh, <laughs> when I toured the apartment, they told me that every neighborhood around the Oakland area of, or the, the Lake Merritt area of Oakland had race laws. So not only could blacks not move in, but Italians and Greeks couldn't move in. And I'm sure many other ethnic, ethnicities for which I would be confused for. Yeah. Uh, but in the listing on Craigslist... Which my grandfather was not confused for. By the way, no. I, was very impressed I met her grandpa for the first time ever today, and um, that dude nailed my ethnicity like liggity split. He, he like uh, have a heartbeat, and he's like, "Aren't you?" And I'm like, "Dude, totally nailed it, totally nailed it." Um, so, how is it listed in Craigslist? Well, so it was uh. Mentioned specifically for bachelors. It was a bachelor apartment for wealthy, wealthy colored gentlemen. Wealthy gentlemen of color. Yeah. Oh, it's hilarious. Uh, so yeah. But it's really nice with the really purple bathroom. Yeah, the bathroom's fairly ridiculous. Uh, and and uh, and the kitchen's on the other side of the bedroom. <laughs> yes. So you have to walk through. It's a railroad apartment. So yeah, we have a big, awesome front room, then like a smaller bedroom, and then an awesome kitchen. Uh, so you can cook food and eat it in bed. Yeah, absolutely. Wealthy gentleman of color is my NWA cover band. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, an old John Smokey live in a railroad apartment. By the way, get, cop that old John Smokey Christmas album, man. That shit was hot. It's totes free. It was, it was on free. The internet. Tell you what, Christmas might be a day away, but uh, you know, you can still start rocking well, it's it. Several days away now. No, it was yesterday. It's almost several days away. <laughs> In thirty-three minutes. In thirty-three minutes. Um, but there we go. Is there any other? I mean, like I don't feel like like you're you're moving. If you live in Kansas City, you need a bed. <laughs> well, all right. If you live in Kansas City, holler at her. Uh, people want to know if you're still going to work for SSA when you live in Oakland. Yes, for a little while. There we so. go. That's your answer. I asked. She was trying to avoid it, and I asked anyway. You're a terrible human being. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, I guess I don't know. What I, else? There are people telling me to show my boobs. Well, I mean, that's because you're a girl on the internet. Oh. Is that what girls on the internet do? Well, that's what they're asked to do. Yeah. That is, that is what is put upon them. Uh, and Cheeto wants me to show my boobs. <laughs> Oh, Can you show your boobs? I by the way, I don't think I've seen them before. So, I am allegedly booked on OMG Craft this weekend. No. Or this, yeah. Uh, you don't even play Minecraft. Chad wants to show me how to play Minecraft. That's going to be the bit. Turns out you have an account. I have an, I, yeah, I have an account. I wonder where that came from. Um... You did. You bought me an account. Yeah. Uh, so I just had to be here at some point to record it. I have to be like... On the weekend after you're gone? No, like tomorrow. Okay. Fine. Number one, for the record, Fine. I told Chad... I thought you to, were my packing mule. I told Chad to organize this with her because she was my scheduler. Whatever. Uh... Chad's a terrible human being. No, he's not. He's a very sweet boy. Uh, yeah. But also, I'll tell you what. If Cheeto's in there, I recorded a bit for OMG Craft that has not aired yet that I'm curious as to when it will air because I would like it to to air because I thought it was pretty funny. I actually I saw the finished version of it. Because I feel like if it had aired... And I watched most of their last episode. If it had aired, people would have said that it had aired. Because it was like, it's pretty red meat for, for, for the chat realm set. Check my DMs for a new intro video. No. Intro to what? Intro to you can't show because you're live right now. I can watch it. You can watch it, but we can't read anything. All right. I know Exploding what that is. Exploding hugs? No. Shh. Oh. They're trying to keep it a secret. Oh. It has nothing to do with hugs, then. Yeah. At all. All right. Not going to show it. Not going to show it. But when is that episode? Because I think it's going to be a really funny episode. People are going to really like it. I really want to know. I'll just say this. If you do not... Watch OMG Craft, man. You need to watch OMG Craft, man. I'll tell you what. There is more setup and pre-work for OMG Craft than anything. Any podcast you've ever done in your life? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wait. Am I So so me being in the episode learning Minecraft is going to be part of that episode? Am I like the special guest of that themed episode? God, this will all make so much more sense when everybody sees the episode and knows what I'm talking about. But, like, I don't want to spoil it because it's a really funny idea. But, by the way, if I'm the special guest, like, for that themed episode, I'm the third best special guest you can get. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> and I might have been the fourth because the other person is involved with the show. I gotta say, this is when it has taken you to learn Minecraft, fuck you. I really want to be on Minecraft, but, like, it's just too much time. Like, I always feel like I'm, I don't have enough time at all. Minecraft is so easy. No, 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 no. Like, not time to learn. It's time that I will spend in there doing Minecrafty things. Minecraft is pretty awesome. Yeah. I play on three servers. You should play on all three of them. By the way, Jack Tucker says, Ashley is very beautiful and I enjoy her opinion. She's pretty much perfect. I bet there's not even a foul scent when she passes gas. There's not. Think again, Jack. There's totes not. Think again, Jack. Ugh. I'll just say that because I was under a blanket last night. I'm sorry. We were driving fucking how goddamn long to get back to Columbus. I was under a blanket that and you fucking were could have knocked out a so horse. And you were so stinky. Oh, my God. What the fuck was that? <laughs> I, I, goddamn, I hope the microphone picked that up. 
You fucking stink, stinky ass bitch. I'm getting away from you. Stop it. Oh, jeez. Is that the end of the uh, is that the end of the live stream? No, Are we done? it's not. Uh, all right, guys. I guess that's it for us. I love you. Uh, thank you for watching uh, our Who's the Boss uh, recording. And You're lucky it doesn't have smell -o vision I will talk to you guys uh, later. I will be back in Oakland to do Jury Saturday. New NSFW next week, which will be our Google Zeitgeist episode. As we did last year, where we got Boodle Deal Do. Boodle Deal Do, born one year ago. Boodle Deedle. 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 Boodle